Hello and welcome to Dawn in Iceland. Scotland is about 500 miles that way, the Arctic Circle only about 100 miles that way. But what looks like the end of the Earth is, as you pan around, actually just a great starting point. So we have a plan. Is it possible to drive from one side of the Iceland all the way to the other, powered by nothing more than water, straw and volcanoes. Looks a lot like a Bentley Flying Spur, doesn't it? And a purple Bentley Flying Spur at that. Now I know it's fashionable to say that when you feel cold it's a bit Baltic, but here it really is practically Arctic. So I'm going to go and get in the car and I'll tell you more once we're underway. Just look at this place, it's absolutely astonishing. Right, I've just about stopped shivering enough now to be able to tell you about the car because you might be wondering if this is sort of some high-tech Bentley test bed, but it's not. It's just the new Flying Spur Hybrid, which means it's got a twin-turbo V6 up front mated to a 130 horsepower electric motor. So there's nothing particularly radical about it. Yes, it's a plug-in, so you've got a maximum range of about 30 miles, but the V6 is definitely the dominant partner. It develops over three times the power of the electric motor. With a total output of 536 horsepower, this thing can do 177 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds. It looks to me as if Bentley is eager to show that eco-credentials don't have to compromise performance. Speed is all well and good, but a hybrid exists to reduce emissions. Now the official figures for this haven't yet been announced, but when they are, I guarantee they will be ridiculous. Claiming this can do 80 miles to the gallon and emit 60 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that's because the test cycle bears no relation to real life. So I tell you what we'll do, we will set some unofficial figures for Bentley, and to do that, I need to go and top up the tanks. All the electricity for car charging on Iceland comes from renewable energy, which is great. The only drawback is the Bentley charges quite slowly because it's only got a seven kilowatt AC charger. So I'm gonna leave that doing its stuff and I'm gonna tell you about straw because this isn't E10 or synthetic fuel. It's not even commercially available yet. Hence why I'm filling up the old fashioned way. Instead, straw is turned into fermented biomass Bear with me a second. And that is turned into ethanol. And then there's some chemistry. And if you want more than that, you look it up on Google while well, I'm a bit busy over here. Okay, so the trip meter's reset. We're rolling. The other side of Iceland is 450 miles away. And I wanna see if we can go the whole journey without having to top up our renewable resources. And that is gonna be right at the cusp of what this car can do. I'm pretty sure a W12 wouldn't be able to do this journey. This might be able to if we're really gentle with it, but actually the hybrid, in order to make way for a bigger battery it has, actually has a fuel tank that's 10 litres smaller than the W12s. Only 80 litres rather than 90, but an 80 litres tank is still a big fuel tank. So, range is currently saying 391 miles. We've got, I think it's probably about 435 to do. Let's see how we get on. The speed limit is 90 kilometers an hour across most of Iceland. But more than that, it is not really a country you want to go herring through. Everywhere you look, it's just stunning. So all you want to do is rest your elbows on the heated, heated armrests, kick back and just calmly absorb everything in front of you. Who needs 
a drone shot montage. You just pull over at the side of the road around here and look. It's a bloody glacier. It's astonishing. And yes, I am driving an EV mode around here. But yes, the irony is not lost on me that I've just driven a heavy luxury car past a glacier that has retreated two kilometers in the last 100 years. Half of that in the last 20 years. If you want a visual representation of global warming, there it is. And the hybrid flying spur feels like a baby step when what we need is a giant leap. Bentley's first all-electric car is still five years away. You worry about the impact that you're having, that this journey is having as we drive across Iceland. But then you look at it and you think, well, it does at least give you an awareness of what does exist on this planet. And I appreciate that cuts both ways coming from a man who is currently driving a Bentley through this landscape. But in the grand scheme of things, this car has now done 235 miles and it has averaged over 28 to the gallon. I can't think of another Bentley I've ever driven that would do that. So yeah, this is a Bentley that has proved surprisingly economical so far. We've done nearly 248 miles and we've done it at 28 to the gallon. But it's not just out there. Arty types like to talk about the frame helping to emphasise the painting. And it's the same here. I think if the scenery was any less jaw-dropping, the dams and leather might feel a little bit OTT. But here, when the views are like this, it feels all kinds of complimentary. It's beautiful. The warmth of the materials are just fabulous. There's a lot going on on the instrument display, I will say that. It's quite hard to keep pace with all the bits of information, but you've also got buttons, and we like buttons. I think the Flying Spur is a car you want to drive yourself. It's the only big saloon I can think of where you don't look like the chauffeur when you're driving it. I don't want to be in the back. I want to be right here with this steering wheel and those views ahead. Hang about, I think that's another perfect opportunity for a stop and a clunky visual metaphor to go with it. Remember what I was saying about this car being powered by water? I think you can see where I'm going with this, but I'm gonna go there anyway. That's Skogafoss, one of the biggest waterfalls in the country. And Iceland actually develops 70% of its electricity through hydro. So yeah, that's the only point I wanted to make. Back in the car. So it can travel at up to 84 miles an hour just on EV mode. But you won't want to because A, that crushes the battery very quickly and B, the acceleration isn't exactly pacey. You need the petrol for that. But actually it drives very smoothly and nicely using the electric. The throttle is very nicely calibrated. But what Bentley haven't gone in for, and they're not alone in this, is they're not using a one pedal system. So if you want to slow down, you need to use the brake. And you can get a little bit of regeneration in under braking but you're not going to recharge the battery very quickly. What is more interesting though, is that this car uses weight to its advantage. It's got good aerodynamics, and that means that when you lift off at speed, whether you're using the petrol or the electric, you coast using the car's momentum, and then it just doesn't seem to lose any speed whatsoever. It helps the economy. And I realized I've just said petrol, and I shouldn't have said petrol, obviously. It's running on straw. But straw is important because it's a second generation biofuel. Now, first generation biofuels, things like wheat grain, vegetable oil, and sugar cane could also be used for human consumption, or the land that they're grown on could be used for production. But straw is a waste, it's a byproduct. The only other thing it's really used for is bedding for your pet rabbit. So can you tell the car is running on straw? No, of course you can't. It's got the same rating as regular petrol, so it feels no different at all. Because this is a V6, the engine is not the smoothest thing about it and doesn't purr and hum like a Bentley should. But I will say this though, we have barely been using more than 2,000 revs today, and all the handovers and its mannerisms at low revs between electric and petrol, straw, 
have been faultless. You just don't know what it's running on. It's just making some decisions and you're going along with it. Well, that is not 450 miles to where we're going. It's more. So, this isn't like going to your normal petrol station. We're fueling up at the side of the road in the night. Doesn't matter, this is all a bit of an adventure. Iceland's astonishing landscape, its volcanoes, waterfalls and glaciers, not only give us opportunities for clean energy, they also remind us how fragile nature is. A fragility at odds with the Flying Spur hybrid, which doesn't quite convince as a true electrified Bentley. But it is heading the right way. On our 471 mile drive across this spectacular country, we averaged exactly 28 mpg, and for a Bentley that's impressive. It's not the end result we want, but as we said at the beginning of this journey, it's a great place to start from. So we didn't quite manage to drive all the way across Iceland without having to refuel. But we topped up with our biofuel last night by the side of the road, and now we've come here to top up our electricity. And here is a geothermal power station. And the power for this comes from volcanoes. 